Hey everyone, here we are for another Ginger Rogers movie. This time, the 1933 comedy, Professional Sweetheart. Also starring Norman Foster, Zazu Pitts, Frank McHugh, Alan Jenkins, and Gregory Radolf. Now, popular radio star Glory Eden, Ginger Rogers, known as the Purity Girl, is on the verge of signing a new contract with their sponsor, the Ipsy Whipsy Washcloth Company, owned by Sam Ipswich, Gregory Radolph. However, she really doesn't want to sign with them, as she is less than thrilled with their morals clause in her current contract, which states that, as the purity girl, she can't eat what she wants, can't dress how she wants, wear makeup, go out to nightclubs or speakeasies, be seen alone with a man, all that type of stuff. Now, after some arguing, she is able to at least convince them that she should have a shot at a relationship with a man. And they all end up picking a letter from one of her fans, Jim Davy, played by Norman Foster, from Kentucky. They bring him there, and while all the men from the company are trying to plan the marriage, press agent Speed Dennis... Frank McHugh has to nudge Jim into proposing because he, they never had any time alone together. Meanwhile, rival company Kelsey Dishrag owner Tim Kelsey, Edgar Kennedy, wants to sign up Glory for his company and sends his man O'Connor, Alan Jenkins, to try and get her to sign. Now O'Connor manages to convince Jim and then Glory not to sign with Ipswich offering them a honeymoon in Atlantic City. However, after the wedding ceremonies aired on the radio for the Ipsy Whipsy Company, Jim discovers that O'Connor wanted Glory to sign a five-year contract with Kelsey, and that the whole thing with the bringing Jim up there and everything was essentially a gag, a publicity stunt, essentially. So Jim secretly brings Glory back to his home in Kentucky, in an attempt to see if she can live with all the simple things that she claimed that she wanted. Now, in what was to be her first film at RKO Studios, Ginger Rogers was signed to a three-film deal. Now, oh, this movie was written by former newswoman Maureen Dallas Watkins, who had famously written the play Chicago, which Ginger would do a version of on screen with Roxy Hart nearly a decade later. Now, Ginger's only complaint with this movie, and one that, uh, quite frankly, most of us fans would probably have too, is that she was, for the only time in her career, dubbed for the singing parts. Otherwise, the movie was well-received, enough so that uh, later that year, she was offered a better seven-year contract, during which time she would famously be paired with Fred Astaire and become an even bigger star. Now, of course, this movie was made before the code was firmly enforced, and boy, you can definitely tell it is a pre-code. From some of the frank, at least for the time, discussions of sex, an openly gay character, and Ginger parading around at times in her underwear. Although, to be fair, it's admittedly he's still modest by our modern standards. But uh, this definitely wouldn't have been a far different movie if it had been released just a few years later. I very much had fun with this movie as it is. It was a very much a complete surprise and one I mainly tried out because of Ginger. And it was worth it. Not just for her, but also for a lot of the other character actors, including Sterling Holloway, the voice of Winnie the Pooh, as one of the reporters. Now I do admit I'm not thrilled with this movie for the fact that Ginger was dubbed. Then again, I don't really care for the song, so... There is that. And the relationship between Glory and Jim is kind of forced, especially since we're supposed to believe they love each other, even though they really haven't had much time together, or alone particularly, until since all the men from the company are with them all the time. And when Jim is pushed into proposing, that's their first time alone together. Still, I had enough fun with this movie. I have no trouble whatsoever in recommending it to since in some ways it still manages to be relevant even today. 
Now, this movie is available on DVD from Warner Archive Collection and is 1 hour and 13 minutes in length. Well, that should be all I have to say on this one, everybody. So, thanks for listening, and I hope you'll keep tuning in for more.